I remember 2004 um, when my father lost his job, my mother also lost her job, and there was no food. We needed to pay the house rent. We needed to eat. We needed to uh, uh, to buy water, but there was no money. I remember one day, uh, my mother used to go to to the bar, bar to go and wash the bar, and she's given that shillings for one hour. That shillings only, and that shillings when she when she comes that money at home, she buys water. That's thirty cents. Yes, thirty cents. No food. So sometimes I could uh, wake up very early in the morning, 5 a.m., to go and steal, to go and collect plastic, plastic, uh, small metals. I could go to the weldings and steal metals to go and sell them, you know, on the scrap, so that I can get some few coins to buy food. Every morning, five. And there was those times I, I, I was caught. There those times... I, I what happened when you got caught? caught? I was beaten thoroughly. And, and I had some injuries on my legs by one of the security guards where we had gone that, uh, 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 that morning to go, where we had gone to steal. Would you go with a group of boys? I went or? with my friend. I went with my friend. Uh, we used to wake up at five and go and pick, collect paper, collect plastic, plastic bottles, uh, plastic things, and small metals. And, and, and we could also go to the welding and garages and steal rings for the for the tire and go and take them to the scrap so that we can sustain ourselves. My father during that time he, he didn't care, like he was a drunkard guy. So he didn't care. My father, my mother was the one who was struggling with us. My father, my mother sometimes could go and wash a bunch of clothes for people so that he can only get one dollar, one dollar, one hundred shillings. And when she comes with that one hundred shillings at home, and everything is 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 is, is budgeted in that one hundred shillings, we have got to buy water in that one hundred shillings. Pay a dollar. To, yeah, a dollar. To, 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 to buy food, to buy what, to buy everything was in that. And after that, one of the shillings is over, we, 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 everyone, you know, for himself. So sometimes he could go without food. Sometimes I could go hungry. Many times. How old were you? By then I was 12 years old and I was in class six. And that is, that is the time I, I joined a bad group due to the challenges at home. Thieves. And the bad you know, group, describe it. The, 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 the uh, company of thieves. So we could go and steal in the in the schools around us. We I could go and st we could go and steal electric wires. Then after stealing those electric wires, we burn them. Then after burning them, we put them together. We go and uh, um, we go and take them to the scrap, and we are given few coins, about forty cents, fifty cents. And after give, you've been given that 50 cents, you just go in, in a hotel and buy tea and mandazi. Uh, or sometimes even uh, uh, um, um, beans and, and, and maize, you know, combined. We normally call it in Africa, gidele, you know. Uh, go and buy choma. Choma is, uh, is uh, a soup of beans and, and, and mandazi, you know. So... Uh, Life was not, it was difficult. I really, uh, I, got, I joined a bad group because of, not that I wanted, but because of the situation at home. And my father being drunk, he never cared. So I had to sort myself during those times. And you were only 12. And that is when, yeah, 12, 13, that was the lifestyle. During, at the age of 12, 13, 14, 15, that was the lifestyle. Until when I finished up my form 4, grade 12, no, 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 my class 8, that is when I was arrested. 
what happened and for we what? We are going to steal in, in one of uh, uh, our schools around and I was caught. The others ran away and I was caught. So I was taken to police station and um, uh, I stayed there for about a couple of, uh, one week and a half days. Uh, one week and a half. So uh, for that period of time I was in the cell and, 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 and life was not and that is where my life uh, took another direction because I, I kept on asking while I was there in that position. There's no... Actually, in the slum, in the slum, you know, uh, as we, as you have heard it, as you all know, slum, uh, Kibira slum is highly populated. Highly populated. How much uh, would you estimate that there are people in the About slum? About 3 million. 3 million people in the slum. And most of the young people uh, don't have jobs. Don't have jobs. So they look for all the means of getting money. And one of the means in the slum of getting money is through stealing. That is one of the uh, uh, commonly mean in the slum. You have to steal. You just have to steal. Mm -hmm. So uh, that is the life in the slum. You, 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 you. Because you like for many pupils in the slum, for many uh, young people in the slum, many of them have finished uh, grade eight, but they have not been able to go to continue their, their college. And could you speak a little bit about uh, the importance to uh, someone in Kenya, the importance of education? Oh my goodness. Actually, in Kenya, we have a saying uh, that uh, education is the key to success. Uh, education in Kenya is very important in such a way that uh, uh, it gives you more opportunities for job. Because in Kenya, the only weapon that we have now is education. Every place you go, they want papers. They and want paper meaning like some kind of a certificate, diploma, yes. certificate. And you have got to have an experience of what you you've studied for. So you find uh, because of uh, uh, lack of education, you find many young people end up living a terrible life because it is the only weapon that we have. There is no place in Kenya, no place you can go. They want paper, even if security, they want to know your, your, your background, your educational, your education background. So that's why education is key to success in Kenya. It means a lot to us as Kenyans people. And that's why when you walk around uh, Kenya, you see libraries, many libraries. We have libraries in the slum. We have uh, libraries at the town center. Men, we have libraries everywhere. Because we believe as Kenyans, education is key to success. So that, um, Education to us Kenyans is very, very important. But and speak a little bit about um, how difficult, I've run into this a numbers of times where they're, uh, the young people, they're able to go to the eighth grade, but then the next, from there, they have to go to the university, and that's where the difficulty is. Explain financially why that is. You see, first of all, uh, one of the area, one of the problem we've been having like when you finished your final exam, grade eight, when your parents realizes you failed, they, they, they give up on you. That is a problem we have with many parents in Kenya. They and what give do, by giving and up, what does they, that mean? They, you know, you, you, your, far, your parents that, that do not struggle enough to pay for your school fees in, 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 in whatever career you want to do. But again, since now, like in Kenya, there is a lot of poverty and corruption. So you find poverty has really affected us. You find um, 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 uh, there are parents, yes, who are willing to educate their children, but because of financial issues, they can't do so. And so, that's very, very common. Yes, and that is the problem we have. There are those who, uh, because of their kids failing in their exams, they give up by not paying for them. But there are those, mm, there is the number of pupils we have who have uh, finished their grade eight and grade 12, you find that their parents 
are uh, poor, they can't uh, help them to move on or to continue their studies. What is that? What would and you find? There is uh, there, there are many pupils in Kenya due to uh, high immorality. Uh, you find there are kids who are orphans. Many of the kids in Kenya are orphans. Uh, uh, there are those who do not have. Uh, there are those who have single parent. There are those who do not have both parents. So that is one of the biggest challenges we face, especially in the slum. We're saying that. It's you've settled it in your heart that you do not want any child to be raised in the way that I you didn't have raised. a choice. I was raised. Uh, you see, as I said earlier, life in the slum is not a good life at all. I have been at the. Uh, I lived a very uh, uh, tough life. Where what did one day consist of? What happened? Hmm? Say you pick a day in your life and tell what describe what it was like living here. What what was what would your day be like? You would get up and what? You just wake up. The environment itself is dirty, full of garbage everywhere. There are no toilets, no bathing rooms. You know, and 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 f to get food is is an issue. Is an issue. You have to to steal some time to get food. You have to do a lot of nasty things to get food because, you know, life is so hard. So I did, I, I will never want to raise my kids in such environment. I will never want to see somebody who's uh, uh, identified with me to live such kind of life. And that's why I really want to be an agent of transformation. Yes, I've been brought up in Islam and I cannot change the past, but, I can change my future. I can change my future. Not just my future, but also the future of the people around me. Because I know what is to lack. I know what is poverty. I know what is to sleep hungry. I know what hard life is. Because I can guarantee you life here is not right. Is not good. So I wouldn't want to see any member of my family struggling as long as I'm alive by the grace of God. And that's why I'm, I'm seeing great things. I'm, 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 I'm everybody, everyone in the family, I'm the only one, who, I'm the only young man who is born again in the whole clan. And everybody is looking up to me. People are looking up to me as the light to them. So I really, I'm really praying to God to help me to transform the whole of my family. That is my prayer. Because people are looking up to me. My brother is looking up to me. My neighbors, my friends, my relatives. Men of my relatives, many of them are hooked up in drugs. Some of them are thieves. Some of them are living in the slum. Men of them are living in the slum. But by the grace of God, God just rescued me from the slum. And I really want, by the grace of God, to come back and rescue them. Because eh, they are really struggling.